welcome to another edition of Pitch Brand Talk. I have with me today Salim Ali, an experienced marketer with over three decades of experience with over three decades of experience in B two B marketing. Salim recently joined Gupshop as its chief marketing officer. Gupshop, as you all know, helps brands interact with customers across media such as voice, SMS, email, and WhatsApp. Salim, welcome to Pitch Brand Talk. Hi, Simran. Thank you. Very nice to meet you and talk to you. Salim, you are the first CMO ever for Gupshop. So I want to know what is your vision and the top three priorities on your agenda right now? Oh, hi, Simran. Yes. Yeah, so I've been here for all for about six weeks now. So as you as you know, I'm very new here. And, uh, and Gupshop has been an amazing growth story, right? It's grown dramatically. We are quiet companies. And we are at the cusp of even more growth at this point. So my approach here is actually threefold. What can I come to do to further accelerate our growth? Growth in India and internationally, that's one aspect. The second is how do we really put forth a strong brand positioning and messaging? The third dimension is how do we really accelerate demand across multiple routes, direct, indirect, partner and customer. So those are the three dimensions that I'm looking at right now. Uh, you mentioned brand positioning. So could you please elaborate on that? Yeah. If you look at the, we literally have created a new category called conversations, engagement, conversational marketing, conversation cloud. And we are the leaders there. As a brand, if you ask most people in the tech world in this category of marketing, Gupshop comes up. How do we really claim that mantle of leadership on a global scale so that people immediately know what we stand for, what we offer, 45,000 customers, the scale we have. So we want to communicate that boldly and in a louder voice. Now, as a B2B marketer, you know, uh, what is your, uh, what is the core of your marketing strategy if I were to ask you at Gupshop or rather what would it be? You know, at the very at the very core for B2B marketing, it's actually very simple. First step is really understand who your customer base is, whom you're going after, which is we start with something called an ideal customer profile, an ICP. It tells you you're going after this customer, this segment, this industry, this size. So we need to really understand and be precise about that. Once you know that, then the question is, what are the different channels and techniques and tactics you have to get to them? Right, there are many, multiple channels are there, and we can do multiple things there. And the third part is once you do that, can you do that at scale, at a global level? Because the marketing in India is different from marketing in the Middle East, or marketing in Brazil, or marketing in the US. How do you do that with a global lens that allow you to scale and grow faster? You know, uh, you spoke about global scale, but when it comes to B two B marketing, and you mentioned customer profile or my ID customer. Content is one part which plays a very important role. And the other very critical part is relationships. So when talking about such scale and learning, how do you maintain content across the global scale, which uh, resonates with your customer base, as well as relationships? Because that is very important in a category such as yours. But that's very true. It's very true. So if you really break it down, right? Even though we say we are a B2B company or any company is a B2B, end of the day, people buy software. It's not an unnamed, faceless company somewhere. It's not a building. People buy software. If people buy software, we need to understand who's the buyer, what we call the buying center. Is it a marketer buying the software? Is it an IT leader buying a software? Is it a customer success person buying this software? We need really to be precise about who are we talking to, number one. Number two, we need to really understand their pain points. Because what a marketer cares about is very different from what a customer success person cares about, what a CIO cares about, right? So that's the core of understanding who your buying persona is. Secondly, when in an enterprise world, buying doesn't happen in a vacuum. There's a buyer, there's an influencer, there's a user. They may not be all the same. Because a, a procurement guy or a finance guy or a CIO may buy the software, but it's used by marketing. It is used by other functions. So we need to understand and create content for those personas, right? That's step one. Step two is 
content has to speak to their precise pain points and outcomes. So they have a pain point. How can we solve better than anyone else? And what are the benefits they get, right? Third thing is then we communicate that consistently across all our channels, right? Meaning is not one time you send an email or one time you do a webinar or one time something on a website. All touch points have to be consistent and we engage them consistently because for an enterprise sale, you may know this, an average of eight touch points happen before the customer even takes the first meeting. It's reality, right? So how do you consistently do that across all touch points, all channels, focus on pain points and outcome is the best way I think might work for most companies. Uh, I just have a follow-up question. Now, are the marketing budgets, because this is, at the end of the day, there's also technology involved and, uh, you know, so much of technology is now used in marketing. So are you seeing budgets come from the marketing side of it or the technology side of it? So is the CTO also more involved now in making the decision along with the CMO? Or how do you, or is it still the CMO taking the call? So how is it? Yeah, it's a good question. Over the last maybe 10, 15 years, you've seen the CMO having more control and more bigger budgets than CIO, CTO, right? That, you've seen the shift happen. How that said, the CIOs and CTO are critical partners in making the choice because the security comes in, integration comes in, right? All of the other aspects come in. So we do believe that CMOs have a big budget they are the critical primary buyer, but the secondary influence is definitely the CIO and CMO. And to top of that, we have multiple products, some that go to the marketing uh, need, some that go to the IT needs, some that go to the support needs. So in that case, the primary buyer may change, but the CIO is clearly very important in all cases. Okay. Uh, can you share a profile of your client base right now? Which verticals is uh, kind of important or uh... Yeah, so we, as we've said, we have over 45,000 customers, right? It's, it's a big number. Our customers span a variety of industries. Some obvious ones are BFSI, financial services, retail, ed, education, ed, ed tech, public sector slash government, right? So, and, and of course, also, the new emerging markets like healthcare, this the gravity there. So, if you look across multiple industries, some in some countries and markets, some industries take off faster. For example, in Brazil, retail may take off faster. In the Middle East, it may be healthcare. But broadly, forty-five thousand customers across a wide variety of industries, and the ones I mentioned are the ones that have a lot more uh, uh, gravity as well. And are these customers still skewed towards India? What percentage is from India and uh, outside India? Yeah, so the we are still predominantly history. History tells us from our you know our, our the way we've grown. We've been an India centric company for a while, but that mix is changing now. So I think what we know is that has been published seventy whatever right two thirds of our revenue comes from India, but over the last in recent time that mix is changing. So we have now Middle East, uh, Amina region bubbling up. We have LATAM with, you know, with Brazil and, and uh, Mexico lighting up. We have Asia Pack as well. So that mix is definitely shifting to having a more global pie. Um, now coming to AI, you know, it's become a buzzword when it comes to marketing, also in other various uh, aspects of life. But uh, have you seen when the customer is buying, has the investment gone up? Uh, you know, or has the allocation specifically for AI within the digital budget, has that increased? You know, it's ironic because we are a conversational experience, conversation platform. And exactly. AI has the most impact, obviously, in conversations, right? So as yes. you also know, we in late last year, we launched something called an ACE LLM, right? We've launched mm -hmm. a bunch of data models just for our customers either based on the buying center, IT, you know, marketing, whatever, support, and for specific industries. So in our case, AI is built into our platform. It's a core product. It's not an add-on. It's not something we just tagged on recently. It's core. So we definitely see that coming up a lot of time. People really want to understand. And, and AI in our case really provides tangible, clear benefits, right? Both from an automation perspective and from a relevance to customer engagement and from a cost perspective. So we really definitely see that coming up more and more, even more as we go forward. 
Uh, there have been calls for regulatory intervention to curb the misuse of uh, deepfakes and AI, and particularly because you, as a, a platform, you're a conversational platform, right? So are there any precautions that you, brands, that you believe that brands should take on this front? No, that's a very thoughtful question. There are a few things brands have to do, right? There's definitely a concern. And anything that's new and emerging and moving so fast, there's definitely a room for some more governance, some more structure, right? And what I would say is that any brand needs to have clear guidelines and policies for ethical use of tech, ethical use of AI especially, right? That's mm -hmm. one. Secondly, they need to deploy very robust authentication and verification processes. And thirdly, despite the first two, they need to have tech to detect deep fakes, because deep fakes are real now, right? The tech is so good, AI is so good that you can you have deep fakes. So how do you detect it, right? And the fourth is to do all that, you need to monitor, right? Yes. Any misuse happening, any brand, you know, invasion happening, all of that. So you really need to detect and act fast. So it goes across tech, processes, and reaction to handle any potential, you know, curveballs that come your way. Um. Uh you, now, what are the future trends that you see when it comes to conversational AI and marketing? You know, if you really step back, you know, we, for the longest time, we were marketing on email. Right? That's what we did. Blind email. We do. Then we did, we do events, right? We do billboards. We did app. Companies build apps, right? Mobile apps. But mobile apps have become a big friction point. Adoption is going down. The moment you say, you know, to engage me to download an app, 40% people do stop the process, right? So conversations mm -hmm. are the next, uh, you know, domain of marketing. And I say that not just as gupshup, I say that as a marketer. Because conversations are real time. They are personal. I know whom I'm talking to. It's very, it's very interpersonal and it's very, very real time. Right, so conversations are going to play a lot into marketing, whether you're B2B, B2C, doesn't matter. So that's a skill set and tech that we need to kind of invest in so that we are marketing across email, physical events, social, as well as a new domain of, of conversational marketing. You spoke about conversational marketing and being personal, but you as a customer, I'm talking from personal experience, you do know when you're talking to a chat box and you do know when there is human intervention. Is there anything that brands can do, you believe, which can make the experience an elevated experience, especially in the initial, uh, you know, when the first time you interact with the uh, with the brand and you know it's a chat box that you're actually uh, having a conversation with? Yeah, I think when you reach out, and you and I as consumers reach out to a brand, right? What do we want? Right. We want fast reaction. We want contextual reaction. And we want it to be authentic. Right. That's what it okay. is, right? And the way to do that is, for example, we have something called a journey builder. Brands mm -hmm. can create journeys. Hey, for this context, this question, it needs to punch out to an agent, as an example. For this okay. context, this question, it could be handheld by tech or an AI bot, right? Then you punch out. So the idea is to really be thoughtful in creating these journeys that are contextual and are really, really adapted to your question. For example, if you're asking a very tactical, show me a bill. You don't need a person. Someone can give it to you by auto bot, right? By using a bot. But if you want to speak to someone, don't have them jump through hoops to talk to someone. So I also, as a consumer, really don't like if I have to jump through for basic stuff. For basic stuff, it can help me. Great. If not, get to me to speak to someone very fast. The second point, Simran, is that as AI models are evolving and tech is evolving, we are getting to a stage where the distinction between what's real and, 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 and bought is becoming very, very diffused. So you're actually feeling like you're talking to someone when actually it's very authentic, it's contextual, it's not making stuff up. So if we get there, that'll be golden because you're talking to someone who seems real, knows who you are, knows what your needs are, and can answer your question. That's what you need to get to. Sure. Coming to Gupshup's products and services, can you talk about any of their recent launches or any of the upcoming launches that we can see and how it will help the brand and marketer? I think we recently about, uh, before I, just before I joined in March, we launched something called the Conversation Cloud. It's right. our first, it's probably the broadest and the most deepest and the most complete conversation experience cloud. Uh, or platform anyone has launched. That's what we launched. And it has basically three big 
element just to go into one level below the, the, the phrase, right? There's a communicate layer which helps you send messages. It is auto failover, whether it's SMS or WhatsApp, or it doesn't matter. So it's a very strong communicate layer. On top of that, something called converse layer, where you can build journeys, you, have, you can run campaigns, you can do catalogs and payments, you can also an agent assist, right? It's a very rich, very bi-directional, uh, automated conversation layer. The third one is click to chat ad. Click to WhatsApp, click to Instagram, whatever, right? So that's a third dimension you can do as well. All of this is built on two foundational blocks that we have. One is our customer 360 CDP customer data platform, very rich, built for conversations. It's not an add on, it's built just for conversations. And we also have a huge, very strong AA, Gupship AI platform as well. So those are the elements of our cloud, the three layers built on two foundations. And that's what we launched in March recently. Uh, looking forward, what else can we expect from Gupshop, both in terms of products and services and also your expansion in geographical footprint? You know, uh, from a product perspective, as you know, we are fairly inventive. We run very fast. We also, we also tend to, you know, really bring compelling innovation to the market. Consistently, we've done that, right? So there's more stuff you're working on and we're listening to customers consistently. For example, RCS, which is you know, uh, uh, the next gen of texting, which will be more you know, multi, uh, rich texting that Google is supporting, Apple is now going to support, we're going to support that as well, even more deeper, even with even more completeness than we've done before, as an example. We will continue to launch and make more innovation on the AI front, right? We consistently do that anyway. We'll keep doing that, and there's no surprise there. We'll also build integrations and support for other channels as they may come up, right? Uh, now, keep in mind, though, Voice and conversations are agnostic of your phone. What if tomorrow you have a this Vision Pro reality handset? You're going to talk to it. Or let's say you have a AI pin, which you just tap and talk to it. Right? So for us, it doesn't matter what surface you have. As surfaces are coming up, conversations are the pin. You can browse on this. You can browse on a pin, but conversation is what it is the voice so we're going to enable all the surfaces as well as we look forward right we don't know the future holds but the idea is conversation is a common theme across many touch points now into the future thank you so much Salim, for your time it was a really insightful conversation with you thank you for taking time out thank you so much